Now, this is my type of SCP video, guys. I don't know much about this anomaly. It's called SCP-505, the ink stain. And apparently, it can cause the end of the world. <laughs> Okay, so it's Keter, which means it's very, very hard to contain, and there's very, very special containment procedures, but the idea that this thing is something as mundane as an ink stain that can cause the end of the world is pretty fascinating. That's why I love the SCP universe so much, you guys. Listen, this one's by the Vulgan. Make sure to subscribe to his channel. Subscribe to mine if you like reactions, and let's get into this one. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Dr. Miller. My name is Dr. Miller, and the SCP we're going to be looking at today is SCP... That's a pin. 505. Is it a pin or Object class, Keter. We'll see. Special containment procedures. Okay, tell us about it. SCP-505 is contained in a 50 by 40 by 10 meter room at site... That's a SCP lot bigger than my office. <laughs> containment area is to be sealed other than one secure airlock and a series of pipes allowing transport of SCP-5051 to storage tanks in the event of SCP-5051 uh, so reaching levels in which it poses danger to containment. Sprayers right? for sodium hydroxide are to be available through SCP-505's so containment spreads? area and the rest of site to combat a containment breach. In the okay. event of a spill of SCP-5051, mm, the affected ink. area should immediately be covered with an absorbent material. Commercial blotting paper is currently standard for this oh purpose, my. and doused with alcohol or acetone if sodium hydroxide is not immediately available. If that would sodium be it in the picture, sodium hydroxide immersion is the That's method scary. of choice for SCP-5051 okay, containment, followed by incineration of affected material if practicable. Soak it up with paper and there burn. Are currently instances of SCP-5051 points of secondary contamination outside SCP-505's primary containment so area. So it has already Containment breached, in these areas is variable, but efforts have been made to make the procedures as similar to those of the primary site if possible. Okay. Of these secondary contamination zones are unable to be fully contained at this time resulting in the spread of SCP-5051 so throughout the environment. Fully contain it. These sites are to be monitored at spreading. all times, and countermeasure deployment is of the highest priority. Okay. For a complete list of SCP-5051 secondary containment sites, see document 505 So this ish is dangerous, y'all. Very, very dangerous. SCP-505 is a model Faber-Castell fountain pen, produced in 2001. So it's For documentation pen. of its acquisition by the Foundation, see Addendum 5052. It is identical in all respects to a standard fountain pen, Regular old apart pen. from its association with SCP-5051. SCP-5051 is the black ink produced by SCP-505, gotcha. which exhibits the property of self-replication. Mm -hmm. SCP-5051 spreads at a variable rate, affected variable. by the substance it comes into contact with and the amount of SCP-5051 present. Oh. Quantities of SCP-5051 have been shown to increase at rates between 0 0.5 and 540 milliliters per second. That's big Standard ink removing bro. chemicals are able to partially remove Almost SCP-5051 like a of wine wine per second and inhibit its at spread. Maximum. However, sodium hydroxide is necessary to remove SCP-5051 contamination completely and has shown gotcha. to be ineffective in environments with particularly high SCP-5051 concentrations. So the more Fortunately, the there growth is, rate of SCP-5051 appears to be inversely proportional to its quantity at high concentrations. Okay. Whilst the observed effects of this are negligible in most cases, mm, this my. inverse growth phenomenon provides the only explanation for the partial containment of SCP-5051 despite a number of cases of large-scale environmental contamination gotcha which were projected to otherwise lead to an NK-class end-of-the-world scenario. So the more there is, the SCP slower it expands. No unusual mistake, properties, right? other than its constant spread and partial resistance to removal, it nonetheless poses serious difficulties for control. Of course, it's still SCP-5051 will flow across non-absorbent surfaces and pass through porous surfaces in an identical fashion to normal ink. All liquid okay. or solid objects or beings in contact with SCP-5051 will be contaminated. SCP-5051 wow. so will still adhere everything. to non-porous surfaces, such as metals, but newly produced SCP-5051 will constantly flow off. Wait. So, if something gets stained, 
even if it's not really something that uh, that that stains easily like metal for instance like your watch okay some ink gets on your watch a metal watch and it just stains it it all of the new stuff that it produces won't stick to the metal it'll just flow off and contaminate everything else it touches this can, can you imagine like this stuff getting on a crowd of people how and and them just running away in fear how exponentially fast this would grow holy crap dude Non-porous materials are thus catalysts for SCP-5051 spread, Crazy. and all SCP-5051 contamination should be covered in porous materials, such as blotting paper, for this reason. It is not yeah. possible Everything's to a catalyst that's not contain SCP-5051 in a non-porous container, as said container's contents will gradually increase in quantity, leading to increased pressure and subsequent right. rupture. It'll All pop. containers being used to contain SCP-5051 must therefore be drained periodically to prevent a containment breach. SCP-5051's effects on its environment are identical to those of an equivalent quantity of standard fountain pen ink. Okay. SCP-5051 exposure will inevitably lead to the death of living organisms. Oh, crap. <laughs> will be killed due to inhibition of photosynthesis whereas animals will be killed due to chemical poisoning. Gotcha. In humans and other mammals, SCP-5051 contact will most likely be via the skin, sure. where it will spread until it reaches an orifice or a break in the skin and subsequently enter the vascular system through mucous membranes. Dang. SCP-5051 will spread through the vasculature and have catastrophic effects on all organ systems of it course. reaches it just as it continuously expands. replicates and is right. unable to be excreted by the urinary system. Cause of death is generally multiple organ failure. Although in most Dang. cases, affected individuals will be terminated and decontaminated prior to this. Sure. <laughs> For containment procedures in these instances, right. see Addendum 505-1. SCP-5051 also has an increased rate of spread through non-viscous fluids, such as water, as oh, would be expected wow. of normal ink. Right. Any contamination of the water table with SCP-5051 must be prevented at all costs due to the potential for an NK-class end-of-the-world scenario. It is unknown whether SCP-5051's aforementioned property of an inversely proportional rate of spread will manifest in fluids as experimentation with such high quantities of SCP-5051 is strictly forbidden. Thus, any environmental SCP-5051 contamination in water sources must be met with immediate damming and drainage into storage <laughs> yeah. tanks of all affected areas. I guess areas. so, man. Addendum oh my gosh. Procedures for dealing with SCP-5051 contamination in humans. This is gonna get ugly. Administration of multiple dose activated charcoal has been shown to slow the progress of SCP-5051 contamination in humans, but is unable to halt the process. Nothing can the save only you, known baby. methods of treatment for SCP-5051 contamination in humans are by the immediate excision of the affected area or continuous application of all. ethanol to an affected skin region. Topical ethanol, ethanol okay. treatment will not prevent the affected individual from transmitting SCP-5051 to other surfaces and is thus highly discouraged, except in the cases of essential personnel, in uh. which case containment procedures must be observed as in all other sites of secondary SCP-5051 contamination. In right. theory, excision or amputation of affected areas would be the gold standard for treatment, sure. but contamination of surgical instruments and personnel remains a problem. Oh. Therefore, all cases of SCP-5051 contamination in humans, other than essential personnel, should be dealt with by termination, followed by standard procedure of sodium hydroxide immersion and incineration of God. the remains. Dang. Addendum 505-2. SCP-505 Retrieval History. SCP-505 was acquired by the Foundation from the town of in Oman when the town okay. in question was quarantined by the Omani government due to reports of a black fluid beginning to seep out from the town's post office oh, gosh. and causing the deaths of a number of its inhabitants. Fortuitously, right. the arid and remote location of the incident prevented wide-scale environmental contamination of SCP-5051. The Foundation retrieved SCP-5051 with casualties. No other anomalous properties of the town's post office or the town itself were detected, right. and it was deemed necessary to terminate the civilian inhabitants of 
who were deemed likely to be contaminated. The incident was reported as a non-extra-normal chemical spill. Can you imagine if that was at the post office okay, in New York City? I know. City? Before you say anything, this article is very outdated. All right. This is clearly not a Keter class anomaly, but I need to present it it's not? as what the article says. We can all have a little discussion now as to what it should be classified as. Anyway, this concludes today's lecture. It's definitely Thank special containment pre procedures, are, so it might be you Euclid. Dismissed. Goodbye for now. Things have changed over time with like with stuff like that, so it's it's really really hard to tell. Let's see if anybody in the comments is saying anything. A lot of people arguing this to be classified as Euclid, but I believe that the classification of Keter is actually too soft, physically impossible to permanently contain. Right? That's that's what's crazy about it. Call me old-fashioned boomer that's in me, but this is what I love about SCP. No super dimensional death gods that can end life in seconds. They can, in just being need to an hour to explain what it's about. Right. This is creepy, unnerving thing that the Foundation can't explain or contain. Yeah, very, very cool. So, I mean, honestly, it, it really all depends on what you think would be the 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 gold standard for Keter or whatever. Honestly, though, I'm in the camp of Keter because not only before the extended classifications, these things were pretty much like that. They, they would describe danger as well, right? Not not technically, but most Keter class objects were very, very dangerous just due to their inability to contain them. Um, but this thing is wild, man. Like, it's, it's anything that can expand exponentially and indefinitely. <laughs> it doesn't matter if it would kill human beings. It would honestly just, it would, it would, it would eventually just cover the entire globe with ink right it would just in in it would just flow it would just flood everything so that by itself is is nuts i don't know this was good though guys the vulcan make sure to subscribe to him subscribe to me if you like reaction videos too thanks so much for watching as always this is a little bit signing off we'll see you next time